welcome to York Minster, York's number one tourist attraction. Over 700,000 people visit the Minster each year. Building of the Minster began in 1230 and completed in 1472. That's 242 years of building. York Minster is the second largest Gothic cathedral in Northern Europe. Gothic cathedrals are famous for their height and pointed arches, as well as ugly creatures, which you can see across the front of the Minster called gargoyles. It is said that gargoyles were put there to scare off evil spirits. Another feature of Gothic architecture is the stained glass windows. If we look up at the great west window behind me, what shape can you see in the front of the window? It's a heart, called the Heart of Yorkshire. According to legend, if a couple who are in love kiss under the heart, they will stay together forever. And finally, one curious thing about the Minster is it has its own police, called the York Minster Police, who are responsible for the security of the Minster. So if you come and visit here, make sure you behave yourself. We are now inside the nave. The nave is the central part of a church building. York Minster nave is the widest in Europe and among one of the highest. This is enhanced by the large stained glass windows. Now that we are inside, we can see the colors and shapes of the great west window. If you look closely, you can see scenes from the life of Christ. One final curious thing is that behind me you can see a dragon. Can you guess the purpose of this dragon? What is the reason it is here? The answer is, it is a mystery. Nobody actually knows the real reason. We are now in the central crossing point of the York Minster. Right behind me you can see the choir screen. The choir screen separated the choir, the group of singers in a church, from the rest of the minster. It also supported the tower columns. Can you guess who the men behind me might be? Look closely at what they are wearing and any new accessories they have. These are the 15 kings of England from 1066 to 1472. Right now, we're going to go say hello to the first Norman King of England. This is William the Conqueror. William was the first Norman King of England after he defeated the last Anglo-Saxon King Harold in 1066. William was from Normandy in France and couldn't really speak English when he first became king. Actually, he never really mastered the language in his lifetime. And he is one of the reasons there's so many French words in the English language today. Okay, if we leave William and walk down past the other kings, we're gonna to come to the King of England in 1472, when the Minster was completed. So down here at the bottom, we will find Henry VI, who, as I said, was the last king when the Minster was completed in 1472. If we look above us, we can see Central Tower. Central Tower is the largest structure in York at 72 meters in height. It is large enough to fit the Leaning Tower of Pisa inside it. It was originally built in the medieval period, but had to be rebuilt in 1407 after it collapsed. If you were ever in York, you can climb the 275 steps right up to the top of the tower to take in beautiful panoramic views of the city. We are now in the south transept, the earliest part of the cathedral. If we look above the main entrance, we can see another beautiful stained glass window. Can you guess what the shapes in the window are? I'll give you a hint, they're connected with flowers. 
This is the rose window. If you look closely, you can see the red roses of Lancaster and the white roses of York. You will also see Tudor roses, also known as Union roses, as the House of Tudor united the House of Lancaster and the House of York. If you look closely at the Tudor rose, you will notice it has five white inner petals and five red outer petals. We are still in the south transept of the cathedral. If we look up at the roof, we can notice that the wooden roof was rebuilt in 1984 after a fire started when the minster was struck by lightning. An also interesting feature of this part of the roof is that there are a few unusual roof bosses. Bosses are the decorative circular parts which you can see which cover the roof joints. These unusual bosses were designed by children. A popular UK television program called Blue Peter ran a competition asking children to design the bosses. Over 35,000 children entered the competition and these were the chosen designs. York Minster has one of the UK's leading cathedral choirs. It includes seven adult songmen who are paid professional singers, choral scholars who are paid student singers, and boy and girl choristers aged between 7 and 13. The cathedral was one of the first cathedrals to include girl choristers who share the singing equally with the boys at eight sung services each week during term time. York Minster's grand organ has 5,403 pipes and dates back from the early 1830s. It is currently undergoing a large £2 million refurbishment and should be ready for use in spring 2021. The Minster is very busy at the moment doing something called organ voicing. The voicing of an organ is the art of achieving the required tonal quality from each pipe. So as you can imagine, there's 5,403 pipes to be done. They will be very busy. Welcome to York Chapter House, personally my favourite part of the York Minster. A chapter house in a cathedral is a place where meetings used to be held. In this chapter house, we've got beautiful stained glass windows which lead your eyes upwards to the marvellously ribbed vault of a ceiling. This chapter house used to be held for the day-to-day -day meetings of the York Minster. And it was even the location of the Parliament of King Edward I. The acoustics in here are really interesting. The chapter house has a long reverberation time. So everything in here sounds very echoey. So one final thing I wanted to show you here in the chapter house is this Latin inscription. In English, it means, like the rose is the flower of flowers, so this house is that of houses. What do you think this means? We are now at the great east window. The window shows scenes from the Bible and is over 600 years old. It is the largest expanse of medieval stained glass in the world and is the same size as a tennis court. The window was designed by John Thornton in 1408 and he was paid just 56 pounds for his work. The window underwent a major conservation project which was completed in 2018. For the project, each pane of glass was removed, restored and put back in place. The project cost around £11 million. Pounds. <laughs>